Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about a YouTube video that Marvel actually put up that ties in to the Absolute Carnage event. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already saw it. It's called Breakout. And I'm not going to do like a reaction video to it uh, because I actually genuinely liked it. And it's like maybe five or six minutes long. And I was like, yeah, it's too long to watch something on here, I feel. Um, at least right now, like with all the other stuff I got going on, the other videos I got to make. But I wanted to get this up and, and talk about it and at least kind of review this little movie. And so if you haven't seen it yet, I would, I'll put the link down below. Check it out first. Go watch it and then come back here and join our conversation about it in the comments down below uh, because it was really well done I, I would say i have some minor nitpicks on it uh, but overall it's a great like side story to absolute carnage number one and maybe even something that might happen in absolute carnage number two i thought the, the ending actually surprised me because it went beyond the pages of the first issue and i was like oh wow are we gonna see this coming up um, i'm very excited for that so uh so as you know in the first issue you had uh, Spider-Man and Venom uh, get you know Normie, uh, Norman Osborn's grandson, uh, to come to the Maker and maybe you know take the the, the Codex out of his spine uh, peacefully, like without killing him, uh, because Carnage obviously wants to kill everyone he takes the Codex out of. So they're like, hey, if we have a machine that can pull it out uh, without killing the host, that would be great, and maybe we can save a lot of people at the same time and keep those Codexes away from Carnage without you know um, someone attached to it that could get killed. So uh, yeah, it's a noble cause for sure. They're trying their best, right? They don't. They're they're in over their head uh, for the most part. Uh, but anyway, you have Normie Osborne out there who's technically housing a codex inside of him. So in this little short story, it starts off and there's this guy named Doctor Treadwell or something like that, and he's like a, a, a psychiatrist at uh, Ravencroft, and he goes down into the basement with this other doctor, and the two of them are kind of talking to Cletus Cassidy, or not Cletus Cassidy, but Norman Osborne, who thinks he's Cletus Cassidy. Uh, and so what I liked was the voice acting, actually, in this scene, because uh, the guy who played Treadwell, the other uh, doctor, I can't remember her name, uh, but they were both really great, uh, great uh, delivery on emotion and, and certain things that they needed to convey in those scenes, considering it's like a essentially a motion comic in a way. Uh, but, uh, but they did a really good job, and then the person who did Norman Osborne's voice did like a southern accent, so they sounded like Cletus Cassidy. And so you had this Dr. Treadwell guy kind of intimidated him um, and he's like hey you know like he's poking at him he's like you know Norman Osborn one of the strongest men in the in the you know world right now uh, or was one of the strongest men in the world at one point he ran his own company at one point he was the head of the Avengers uh, when he took a, took it away from the regular superheroes um, and then and then now you know he's always wanted more power and he bonded with the carnage symbiote and then it was abruptly pulled away from him and it apparently left some of Cletus Cassidy's psyche inside Norman's body and he goes so I don't understand how Norman Osborn would take a back seat and allow someone else to drive the car that is Norman Osborn you're the one who wants power why don't you come out and this was his way of intimidating him but also trying to provoke the Norman Osborn personality to come back out. And it doesn't work. Uh, the Cletus Cassidy personality has completely taken over. And it's like, you know what? I'm just going to kill you now. And it's like punching a wall. His knuckles are bleeding. And the guy's like, can I get you something to drink? And uh, Norman Osborn slash Cletus goes, yeah, I want to drink your blood. <laughs> and it's it's pretty intense. And then the guy's like, all right, well, you know, I'll come back later and we'll talk to you some more later. And then he leaves with the, the female doctor. And she's like, was that smart? I mean, we're doctors. We're supposed to care for our patients. Why why'd you intimidate them? He's like, look, I, we've tried everything. I I haven't been able to get through to him. I was trying to get the Norman Osborn personality to wake back up because then maybe we can just deal with Norman Osborn and not, uh, you know, someone who thinks he's Cletus Cassidy. Um, or maybe he's just pulling this card to get the crazy plea and he deserves a much more brutal punishment. He's like, so I'm, I'm tired of like, you know, going in with the, the bread, the crust cut off of the sandwich. I'm going in harsher now and I'm, I'm not going to just like hand him this on a silver platter. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive in my tactics. So they're walking away and as they do that, that's, it cuts to like, current time and that, so that all took place before absolute carnage number one then it cuts to the sirens going off and spider-man and venom fighting all the symbiotes that uh, cletus cassidy the real one or the you know the one that's uh, linked to nolan stuff shows up with and so they're fighting and then they get through spider-man gets thrown through the door and he's hanging you know he's in the room with norman osborne now and the two of them go at it and it kind of remimics the scene from the comics but this time as a motion comic which is really nice and it looks really cool and the animation's really nicely done so um you know considering their budget and their limitations i thought it came out pretty well so then it after that i was like okay it's just going to end here and say go read you know absolute carnage number one well it didn't end there what happened is venom and spider-man apparently get away so that's kind of a i mean i'm sure we can figure that out anyway that that was going to happen 
Uh, but it was kind of a, a tiny little spoiler in a way of what might happen in issue two of Absolute Carnage. Um, so anyway, so they get away and they just leave, you know, them in the, you know, it's, it's just Norman and uh, Cletus Cassidy who is now turning into the Grendel. And he's standing, he's towering over Norman, who now Norman himself is another Carnage. And he looks more like the traditional Carnage, actually. And he looks up at Cletus and he's like... Um, Thank you for this gift. Like, what you know? What do you want me to do for it? And uh, and he goes, I want you to go after a very specific codex. And then that's when, at the end, Norman Osborn shows up at his old penthouse and he sees Harry and he goes, he goes, where's Normie? And Harry goes, hello, Dad. And then it just ends there. So I'm like, oh, I I wonder. Like, I wonder. Uh, Sean Ryan wrote this, and I'm wondering if that's like a precursor or a little heads up to what's going to happen in the second issue, which we're going to get soon anyway. I think issue two of Absolute Carnage comes out next week uh, already. So I think they were just two weeks apart. They were coming out. So. I'm very excited. We're going to find out more about that. But I thought this little short film was cool. It was fun. It, uh, it added a little something. My little nitpick, though, my major nitpick was Carnage's voice, like the Cletus Cassidy Carnage. His voice didn't work for me. Uh, they didn't really add any filters on it to make it sound a little bit more intense or to sound like a double voice. They didn't do anything creative that way, um, or at least it didn't, it, it's too subtle and you can't notice it. Um, and then also his his accent it was it, it's a little different than the guy playing norman's it's it's a little bit more forced i feel um who knows maybe for all i know the guy's like actually from the south or whatever but it sounded a little bit more forced and when you hear him like up in, and hung, hanging on a wall and he's holding norman osborne and he's like talking with the the accent without something over it to like you know disguise it in some way or make it sound more monstrous it just came across too comical almost like a like a bad cartoon you know where you're almost you know like where someone's mocking a cartoon with a cheap cartoon so that was my only nitpick and it, it is a nitpick because ultimately it didn't take me out of the story that they were telling or the the little movie overall but it was something to where i'm just like uh as someone who just you saw in my intro i did a voice for carnage and venom i did the scream for venom and i did the the voice for carnage and i used you know like an app to help manipulate my voice a little bit to add some kind of sound to it and uh and it was easy to do and so and i i, I i'm not a tech guy at all so if i figured it out i wish these guys would have done it and implemented it into this a little bit but that's just a personal preference it doesn't take me away from the story and it doesn't hurt the story in any way as far as i'm concerned uh but i wanted to watch this and talk about it and i'm glad i did so let me know what you think have you watched it yet and if you still listen to me first and haven't watched it yet please go watch it i just spoiled the whole thing for you but please go watch it anyway uh get them some likes over there and subscribe to that channel the marvel channel um and then in the next episode we'll probably talk about vexed by venom which is the Lego animated movie that was released. It's like a 20, 30 minute cartoon, I think somewhere around there. And they, they were putting it up in, in like slivers. And I did reactions to like the first part and the second part, but then I heard they were just gonna do the whole thing at the end and just put the whole video up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go watch that and then just do a review of it and link that in that description box uh, when I do that episode. Because, uh, you know, doing like five, you know, uh, trailer reaction or video reaction videos um, is just too much uh, right now. Uh, it's like we got so much other stuff to focus on. We got other absolute car stuff to focus on. So I just wanna make one video and we'll review Vex for Venom in the next episode. So make sure you tune in and you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.